I started working for AirCam in March of 2006, and Jay was a helicopter mechanic, and of course us pilots like mechanics, you know. When I'd go on some flights, he'd have to follow me with the fuel truck so we could have fuel and then do maintenance. So I got to know Jay that way. He's not only a good mechanic, he's one of the best, but, you know, he takes a real interest in people. And, uh, and that's because over the years he's found out that he likes seeing people happy, feeling good. And for some reason he was the person chosen, you know, for the, to do the rock, uh, uh, radiation hormesis with the rocks. And he's just the perfect person to do that in my opinion. Hi, my name is Jay Gutierrez. Um, I'm a helicopter mechanic. I'm a medicine man. Uh, I work with radiation hormesis and I wanted to, today to go ahead and explain to everybody about what I do. Uh, years ago I was uh, working with helicopters for the Army. We landed in northern Wyoming and I found a stone on the ground. Well I started mining it for jewelry and uh, getting it out to people and I started getting all these stories back. Um, how they were getting better with all kinds of things. Just way too many to think that it was all in their heads. Um, so I, um, I took a sample to the labs and had them break it down into elements. Um, so I took each element and studied it and find out the medical history on it and find out what was going on. Well, come to find out that there was thorium in the stone and it was slightly radioactive. So then I was worried. I was like, oh my gosh, what have I done to these people? Well, then I started doing research on it and uh, found out that no, actually we were doing a good thing. We have a long history behind this. It took me many years, but uh, I finally found out what it was called. It was called radiation hormesis, okay? Radiation hormesis is, um, what it is is hormesis means to excite. It's a Greek word to mean to excite. What's happening is, is uh, low dose radiation is going in through people and from what they've researched is going ahead and uh, stimulating activating their immune system which we'll go into. We have a long history behind radiation hormesis. Uh, I have a whole collection of antiques from here in the United States from 1910s, 20s, 30s and 40s. I started working with doctors. After, it was hard. I, well, eventually I found some doctors to work with. I would go call doctors, see if they'd work with the stone with their patients. And, and it's really difficult. Try walking into a doctor's office with a rock in your hand and saying, hey, guess what? Um, but I did find a few that would work with me. And uh, the results they got were phenomenal. Well, my name is Rafael D'Angelo. I'm a medical doctor and I practice family medicine with an integrative component. And I have a lot of patients who are like-minded. They want the natural as much as possible and only when is it necessary do we uh, do prescriptive medicine. And Jay Gutierrez uh, came to my office uh, in June of 2006 and he was showing me these uh, rocks which had some low-dose radiation and I was uh, kind of skeptical at first uh, as to what this could possibly mean for uh, health and Jay uh, challenged me to look into a concept called radiation hormesis. Well at that point in time I was suffering from a injured rotator cuff on the right shoulder and he has uh, uh, quite a history of working with people with various uh, problems and complaints. So I asked Jay, I said, Jay, will one of these rocks help uh, this shoulder heal? And he said it would, so I brought a rock home and at that time I was unable to sleep on my right side. It was pretty painful. And I put the rock next to my skin, between the skin and the bed sheet, and I slept that way as much as I could for the following two nights and I realized after two nights of sleeping on the rock that my pain level had gone down 50 percent and as I continued to use the rock only at night I found myself waking up on my right side 
uh, after about a week of use of the rock. Well, I was very impressed because I was not doing anything really for the injury other than his rock. Well, within three months, the arm was totally healed. But during that time, in the few weeks after Jay had come to my office, I started researching radiation hormesis. And I found a wealth of information about the medical and health benefits of very low dose radiation and none of the uh, supposed uh, problems and injuries that we are sometimes led to believe by other sources. I started using it with my patients and this is where things really began to take off. I currently have two patients. Uh, both of them have prostate cancer and the first gentleman, he's 88 years old, very active and vigorous and is on the proper diet for a man who's trying to keep his immune system boosted. Uh, I put a rock in his hands and he uh, had it uh, placed into a pair of shorts that when he wore the shorts the rock was up against the area uh, behind the scrotum and his PSA blood test within six weeks went from eleven and a half to six and a half and we are quite impressed with that. He's doing very well and we're waiting to see uh, what the next blood test will show. Have another gentleman who works with the Veterans Administration. He also has prostate cancer and at the present time uh, we have uh, been able to see his PSA peak and now it's coming down and he also is using the rock. Uh, I have uh, a lot of different patients who have cancers of various kinds and I've had them get in contact with Jay uh, and they just give me these wonderful reports of how they're doing so I'm most appreciative that Jay has devoted himself to this work that he unabashedly talks about it to anyone and everyone who will listen and I am so happy that my patients now have another alternative uh, as far as boosting their immune system and uh, getting themselves back to as healthy uh, an aspect as they possibly can. The stories go on and on and on. My pilot, which may, some of you may have seen a, a clip of, um, he, when he came to me he was 66 years old, his vision was going, he had a prostate problem, I uh, could barely move his neck. Uh, it looked to him like he wasn't going to make his next flight physical and his flying days were over. And that's how this man has made a living all his life. The trouble is when I'm flying the helicopter, my neck's got to be pretty agile, you know, i got to be able to look around. Well, when I first went to work for AirCam, that inflammation was in my spine. In fact, I went and had a MRI and uh, you can see it, the indications of the inflammation along my spine up and down that. But anyway, uh, they gave me some medication and all it did was make me ill. <laughs> it uh, gave, gave me ulcers and uh, I said I'm, I'm not going to take any more medication. And that was just before I met Jay. So then I started using the stone because I was in a lot of pain and especially when I tried turning my neck, you know, it just hurt real bad. So. During the helicopter, I'd have to turn my body to look. So once I started using that stone, that all that pain and stuff went away. Jay was noticing that I was rubbing my neck, you know, and was giving me some problems. So one day he comes in and he says, "Here, I want you to use this on your neck and hold up my hand, and it's a blue stone." I says, "How am I going to put that on my neck?" And uh, he says, "Oh, you'll figure out a way." So I got real creative and got a headband and, you know, attached the stone to the headband with some Velcro and started wearing that stone around, you know. And uh, about six months later, no pain. And my neck just, you know, got better. And I thought, well, that's good. I'll just uh, take the stone off. I won't need it anymore. About three or four months later, it started giving me troubles again. And I had, so I have to use the stone all the time. But uh, at <clears> the <throat> same time, I was having trouble with my eyes. 
And since I had that stone up there on the back of my neck, it, it affected my eyes. I mean, I started saying, holy smokes, I can, I'm starting to see better, Jay. And, uh, you know, that's kind of what's been happening in my life. As a pilot, you got to have good depth perception. And uh, that's what happens. I mean, I use the stone and the mud packs. Take them with me now. I mean, uh, got them right there in that backpack that you're looking at. <clears throat> and uh, I use them all the time. I, I have a prescription, and every year uh, I go in, you know, to get my eyes checked. And my eyes are getting better rather than worse. <laughs> <laughs> so that's kind of fun, you know. I mean, the prescription changes, but it changes for the better. So down the road, I may have to have, you know, some surgery or something on my eyes. But right now, it's just, you know, doing really good. <laughs> Maybe I'll never have to have that because those stones, you know, help my eyes. And anyway, here I was wearing a, a stone, and uh, one day I come in. And I says, Jay, look at my stone. It's, uh, you know, it's turning color. It was a pretty blue, you know, when he gave it to me. Now it's kind of a black charcoal looking thing, you know. And I says, what's going on with the stone? And he says, now this was two years ago. And he says, you know, I've had some other people say that their stone changes color as they start using it. And he says, I can't believe yours is doing that. Well, what it was doing Lo and behold, it was drying that uh, poison out of my neck, that inflammation, and uh, and it was putting it into the stone. And so I've got this. I carry that stone with me. And you can see on one side where I got the Velcro. It's just pretty. On the other side, it's black, and it's because I wear it against the back of my neck, and it just draws. So I wound up sending one to my <clears throat> daughter-in-law in California. She went to Italy and come back with a sore on her leg, wouldn't heal. So I says, Jay, would you send uh, Julia a stone? And he did. And I says, Julia, take and make sure you you know get something and so it'll hold it on that sore. And we just healed it. I mean, it's just amazing what that'll do. I'm not sure the mud packs draw, but the mud packs just do some other things. I mean, it's it's not too comfortable to sleep on the stone, but I put the mud packs in my uh, bed under the sheet, and I lay on top of them. And that's just, uh, you know, I wake up, I sleep, for one thing, I sleep really well with those mud packs. Uh, over the years, I've <clears throat> kind of got so I didn't sleep very well. But these mud packs, they just, uh, they're the ticket for nice sound sleep. But one day I was talking to Jay and I says, Jay was telling me, look Jim, he said, I think what's happening here is that an inflammation in your neck was fungus related. And uh, <clears throat> he says that radiation hormesis kills that fungus and, uh, and that's what happens. Plus, it stimulates your uh, body, and especially the immune system, right? So I think about this for you know a lot, and uh, and other people that I've talked to, uh, that's what happens to them. Jay says, you know, what? this uh, fungus is the is the every body I call up, has got some kind of fungus in their body, and this radiation hormesis takes care of that fungus, it kills it they start getting better. So one day we were out on the helicopter working. Jay's up on the head and I'm handing him some parts and his phone rings. And so he answers it. He says, oh, it's out in the car. He hands me the phone and says, talk to Cindy. I'll be right back. He climbs down on the helicopter and I talk to Cindy who is a lady from uh, Phoenix who has been in crippled in a wheelchair for 20 years. And she says, you know what? Uh, this stone, I'm not in the wheelchair anymore after 20 years. So I says, well, uh, tell me your story. She says, well, I was had uh, meningitis and uh, uh, aspirillus, and I'm in different 
problems, you know, that kept me in the wheelchair. I couldn't use my arms. And uh, one day I was on oxygen, and the oxygen tank on the way back home, something broke off of that tank, a hose or something, and whipped around the truck and broke my arm. And so I was, I fell out of the chair that night, and they couldn't get me back in the chair. I was hurting bad, and lo and behold, there was a stone that some friend of mine gave me that Jay gave her. And here I was, the only thing I could do was use this stone. And I was rubbing it on my arm that was broken and it was bruised and hurting. By the time I got help, she says the pain had gone. <clears throat> the bruising had started to lighten up. And now she says, here I am talking to you on the telephone. She says, six months ago, I wouldn't have been able to talk to you. She said, it's all because of this radiation hormesis and the way it works on my body. Amazing stuff. I said, hey, Jay, when I started using the stone two years ago, one day I said, you know what, I haven't had a cold for a whole year. And he says, I don't, I don't get colds either. Well, it's been over two years now, and I haven't had a cold, I haven't been sick. And <laughs> one day my son, we're sharing a condo, and Paul come down with the flu, and it, it put him down, you know. And uh, I was in the, you know, close by, and uh, I thought, oh, here I go, you know, I'm going to get the flu. Not a sign of the flu. I mean, <laughs> it was a bad flu bug that got him, not, didn't affect me at all. That's just, you know, normal people, you know, need to be healthy. I get a chance to talk with people. Jay has me talk with people. In fact, a lady from Hawaii called me. Her name was Jade, you know. And one, day, one day the phone rang and it was Jade. And she wanted to know about my eyes, you know, because she was having some problems too. So I get a chance to talk to a lot of people and uh, read a lot of uh, emails that Jay gets. And it's just, uh, it's a miracle, you know. Jay's a, a miracle healer. <laughs> That's all I can say. No. I had a, uh, a man come up to, or a woman had gotten a hold of me, and uh, her husband had pancreatic cancer. Uh, they sent him home. They gave him two. They gave him two to six weeks to live. And that is that I know his wife. We work out in the same place, and all this, and known each other a long time, and. Um, she and I happened to be at the same wedding last August, right after they had diagnosed Bill with pancreatic cancer. And she said, oh my, you got to talk to my husband. And I said, I do. <laughs> she <laughs> said, yeah, you need to call Jay. He's had such success with, with uh, radiation stones and cancer. So she gave me Jay's card and, uh, and then I called him. And that's how we, that was our connection. That's how we got started. You know, you have your, you have your um, hesitations about somebody that's in untraditional medicine. Um, and he knows I, I fight. I'm not going to ever say, let's give up. But he was very discouraged when we came home from the hospital. And uh, after he got through talking to Jay, he felt like there was some hope. And I think that's 95% of a positive attitude toward getting better. <laughs> so. I felt amazed because I kept waiting for this horrible pain <laughs> and it never came. And when the hospice would come, that was their big thing. How do you feel? What can we do to stop the pain? I kept, what pain? <laughs> I didn't know what pain. So I felt pretty good. He was. He was waiting for this horrible pain. He just thought that horrible pain was going to hit him and be debilitating. Because that's what they said, you know. And, and he was on home hospice for eight months. And then Medicare took him off. Because they can't, they can't really decide what's going on there. <laughs> they have done ultrasounds. They have done CT scans. They have done 
Um, and as late as last um, February, they could see no change in the mass, whatever was there. And of course, Jay always said, well, it's gone. That's just scar tissue there. <laughs> he came home from the hospital, and he's been an insulin-dependent diabetic for the last several years, and they took him off of all dietary restrictions. They I, took me off of life. <laughs> that's kind of... That's, that's, that's what it was. And uh, so... Fooled them. Fooled them. <laughs> Oh, this is a dream. Does a dream come true? It, uh, just give it time. Can't rush everything. It's not going to happen in an hour. Give it two hours. So what do you say when someone says they have cancer and they don't know what to do? Go see Jay. You got cancer. Goes. He <laughs> can get it out. <laughs> Some people look at me. Are shocked because they thought I died last year. <laughs> also, the Jay's been so helpful. We had to thank God for that. That it was Jay. Nobody else. One of the things that people um, ask us quite a lot is if this treatment that, that Bill's gone on is costly. Um, and of course they're all thinking about the old time had a call guy that was on the wagon that was selling all kinds of magic <laughs> potions. And the rip off people that are out there charging a lot of money. This has been very, very low cost for us, you know. Well, when I, I realized what, that it was radiation hormesis that was working with these people, I needed to know if we could go with a higher level. So I had to find material that was hotter. Now to find the stone and the material that we need, uh, it's fairly difficult because uh, if you do uh, if you do the research on like mining they've done for let's say uranium, uh, what they do is they usually take out hillsides of uh, uh, rock and they crush it up and they use chemicals to draw out the uranium ore or the uranium out of it. And I can't use any of that because it's all chemical uh, drawn out with chemicals. Um, so what I have to do is I have to go back to places and do mining and, and places were done like in the 1940s. And uh, then again we still have to go in and we have to check the material. Not only do I have to see uh, if it's hot enough to, to do any good for anybody, but we, even then I have to take it to the labs, have them break it down to see that uh, there's nothing in, those, in the material that's going to be harmful to anybody. Rock. Just the rock. All rough. That's how they come. It's just a rock. Now we've got to figure out what's the best way to cut this to get the most amount of rock out of it because it all goes by weight.
So you got to look at it and figure what's the best places to cut on it, what's going to fall apart, what won't fall apart. And the darker stuff usually holds together a lot better. You got a lot of silver in it right in here. The light blue stuff, that crumbles and falls apart real easy. This light brown stuff over here, the real light green, you see mixed with a little brown, that'll all fall apart real easy. What's going to push out the best amount of rock, it's going to be right here in the middle where it looks like it'll hold up, where it looks like it's going to be the strongest rock. I'm going to start with that and see if I can't get a couple good cuts out of right here. I'll cut the whole thing up and see what happens with it. It won't just wash up, you got to rub it off. So after we've cut our slabs out of the rock, we just slice it up. After that, we got to take this rock, and we want the rock as smooth as possible because you put it against your body, you put it against your skin, you keep it there for as long as you can generally, and if it's not smooth, you know, you're not going to want to keep it against your body if it's not comfortable to you. You get all this just uh, straight edged out so that we can round off all the sharp edges, pretty much. All right, so after we've cut off all the rough edges on it, we just basically have it all straight edges all the way around. I'm gonna hit it with the grinder grind off all those rough edges just to get the rock as smooth as possible all right now after we've ground it all out and rounded it all off as smooth as we can you know you want it nice and comfortable so that you can put it wherever you need to and it's not going to dig into you or scratch or anything like that. And then we come to the deburring wheel right here. Now we use it to polish the rock. It doesn't actually have any polishing compound on it. It makes it look polished. And if we were to put polish on it and use actual polishing compound, it basically coats the rock with the polish and it'll mask all the rock's properties. So after you finish polishing everything out, you got to know where it's going to go to. Got to weigh the rock out and see what you got. 4.4. Nice. Good. That's what we need. All right. Now we're going to go into how the pendants are done. For the pendants, we use a different rock. It's a different type of rock. It's a carnitite stone. It's just the color is way different. It's a different makeup of rock. Now, when you get your basic carnitite stone, first thing you got to do is measure it out. All this rock here has been cut, measured out, you know, it's all, it's all been cut in one way or another and measured. And this bucket right here is the same way. Everything in here has been cut and measured and you use what you can from it. But generally the good portion of the rock just doesn't work out for you. Everything's got to be real specific and the rocks just don't come that perfect. Now this rock that's over here, all this is from the same rock over here on this right side. It's all pretty hot. There's spots in here that are really hot, really screaming hot. This, you, you get a rock that measures out about where you want it to and you'll start cutting it into slabs like this, just like the green rock you do. Just cut it into slabs about how thick you want it. These are gonna be for pendants so they're a bit thinner. You gotta come out here and measure it to see where it's too hot, where it's not hot enough. Like this is measuring pretty hot. This would be way too hot for your average pendant that you want somebody to wear. Anytime we need something, I gotta come over here and start picking out rocks. If we need a whole bunch of pendants, I gotta come through and measure out and find rocks that are gonna be good for pendants. Cause if I just start randomly grabbing rocks and cutting, I'll never get what we need. Or it's rocks that will, that are real brittle that are going to fall apart. You don't want to give somebody that rock, they're going to get it and it's going to fall apart on them. That's really hot. That we couldn't give to anybody to put against their person. That's not near as hot 
This will probably make some good pendants out of here. So much detail in it and so much time spent just trying to figure will this rock work, what part of that rock will work, and how to cut it right to get just enough hot material in the rock to make it measure out what you want it to while not putting too much in and it's going to be too hot and you can't use it anyway. The history behind radiation and hormesis goes way back. This is nothing new we're doing. In fact, histories, if you look up the, the stories in history of things that have happened in the past, uh, it's absolutely amazing. Um, I'll give an example. Uh, when they set off the Trinity A-bomb, there was a herd of cattle nearby. They got a dose of radiation. Everybody became radiophobic. Uh, you figure the cattle were like eight, nine years old at the time. Do you know that 18 years later, uh, they started slowly euthanizing these cattle, and the reason being because they just weren't dying. Even now, you can go present day, you can go to Montana to raise radon mines, and people spend a lot of money to go set in these mines for radon therapy. These are some examples of some uh, antiques that I've got. These are called revigators. Uh, these revigators were water crocs that they used back in the 1920s. 30s and even in 40s that were lined with uh, uranium ore. And you can see right here, they're hot, if you can hear that. People would do is they, they fill this up with water and they would drink the water. You will find out what they've discovered is, well not discovered, they've done this for a long time, is that uh, the radiation is going through your body. As it's going through your body, it's slightly damaging your cells and DNA. It's kind of like working out. When you're working out, you're damaging your cells and DNA. Um, when that happens, uh, your cells and DNA, they excrete a protein. That's the basis of the, your immune system, how it works. By doing that, we're stimulating and activating your immune system in these different areas. I work mainly these days with people with cancer. Um, and I'm going to give you a couple stories here. For many years I was working with people with cancer and having a great success with it and I, I, what I thought was is that through all the research they've done is that we were stimulating and activating the immune system to uh, fight off the cancer and uh, I thought that's why we were having so much success. Well then one day I had a, a woman call me up and uh, she had aspergillus and uh, spinal meningitis. She'd been bedridden for 17 years. Now aspergillus, or some people say aspergillus, um, is straight out of fungus. Okay, so what happened was within a matter of, oh, a few weeks she was getting better. She, she'd start going into seizures. Now this woman had been bedridden 17 years. She was on oxygen 24 hours a day. Uh, morphine, she was in so much pain, morphine wasn't taking away the pain. And she got wheeled into her doctor's office for a physical and he said, hey, you know what, this is as good as it gets. And he'd been her doctor for 20 years. Well, what happened was that she went in a month later to get a physical. And he walked in there and she's standing there with her hand open saying, hi doc, how are you doing? And, well, she didn't get her physical. Um, he just stood there with his mouth open for 20 minutes. But see, that was important because it was fungus. It was fungus that she had, okay, the aspergillus. Well, that was very important because, like I say, she had aspergillus, which was fungus. Then I had a, a doctor friend of mine in Pennsylvania call me. She had a woman there who was a Mennonite woman who had breast cancer. It was the size of your palm, twice as thick. They more or less sent her home to die. Uh, it was seeping. And, but she tells me, she says, Jay, it smells really bad. And I thought to myself, you know, if it if it smells, it's uh if it smells, it's fungus. So I had her put a hot stone directly on the tumor. When I mean a hot stone, I'm talking about a radioactive stone that's not hot. Everything that comes out of my shop is not I want it strong enough to get a response from the body, but not too strong where we're going to overwhelm the immune system. So when I talk about a hot rock, I'm talking about a higher millirem per hour. I go by millirems. That seems to be the easiest uh, unit of measurement for me to go by. So I sent her a hot stone and had her put it directly on the tumor. Um, within 24 hours, it started to heal over and stop seeping, and the smell was going away. 
within two weeks the tumor was gone. So that put everything together. Um, so what we were doing in actuality after years of following this, not so much research because there is no research on this, but remember I said how the radiation was going through and it's slightly damaging your cells and DNA and how that's stimulating and activating your immune system. Well, from what I see, um, the radiation is actually doing the same thing to the cells of the fungus, except it can't repair itself like the human cell. See, the human cell is in a constant state of repair and duplication. That's what it does, and it does it very well. Uh, now, when you're constantly damaging the cells of the fungus, uh, they can't repair themselves fast like the human cells, so they die. So let's go about like with fungus. Fungus go in your body eats dead tissue. The dead tissue, after the fungus eats a dead tissue, it excretes uh, mycotoxins, which is poison, which kills uh, healthy cells and healthy tissue. In other words, it's creating more food for itself. I believe that those mycotoxins are what is the cancer and what's spreading. So, like you hear a lot of people talking about detox. They're always doing detox to get the poisons out of your body. Well, what's causing those poisons are, is the fungus itself, so we have to get rid of the fungus, what's creating the poison. What it is, is uh, everything makes so much sense. I mean, all we're doing is, let's say cancer, we're going ahead, we're damaging the fungus, we're killing the fungus, that's dropping the poisons, which is the cancer, which is the limes, which is the arthritis, which is uh, uh, just about every disease you can think of. Um, and we're stimulating and activating your immune system, so every, you're getting better, you're feeling better, you're gonna live longer, healthier lives. Um, I've been following this for years. But every day, we get a, an email, a phone call, uh, another miracle comes in. We could go all day long with uh, the miracles coming in, but uh, um, the fact is, is uh, we're just doing this so we can help people. And uh, over my shop, you'll see a sign that says, because people are dying. Um, so I suggest and I really encourage, like I say, for people to go ahead and research radiation hormesis. Go ahead and Google in radiation hormesis and cancer cure or radiation hormesis and anti-aging. Uh, you don't have to go just off my website. Do your own research on it. Um, and if you have any questions, you get a hold of me and we'll answer them for you.